The first thing I'm going to do is just block out my fish. So this is a beta fish. Uh, I don't know if you had those growing up. They're like ribbons. And so mine made me sad because it never swam. It, it just kind of stayed in one place. But they're so beautiful. And so I'm just going to get the outline of my fish all set. And actually... Let's put that there, because it's going to drip. That's really fine, though. And I'm thinking about it in terms of shapes. Now I'm going to take my blue and block out the general of the fish. And I'm going to do my best to not focus on the details too much because I'm going to add So in here, it's all blue. This is the reference image that I generated on the journey. And of course, I always change it a little bit. So I am totally for using any type of technological advantage to help your art, why not? I mean, for me, I'm not trying to prove that to anybody that I am a legitimate artist. Like, if they try to challenge that by saying, oh, well, you're using a reference image or whatever, I would just be okay with it. I would just, like, let them think what they want. <laughs> Honestly, so, and I think just being detached, I'm not trying to prove anything, I'm just trying to do what makes me happy and to make my best work, utilizing anything within my reach to make the artwork even better. So if that's a camera, if that's a still life, if that's a paintbrush, a tool, as simple as a paintbrush. It's still a tool. So when do you differentiate? Like, where's the line of like, oh, that's too much. Okay. I'm gonna continue adding the blue in through here, and now I'm gonna move into the reds and oranges. I'm using really just fluid brush marks. I'm trying to look at the general larger shapes because you can always paint over it, but you have to kind of start out with something. I'm taking the white and kind of breaking up the boundaries of my beta fish. A lot of times we psych ourselves out and I just feel like whatever we're looking at is too difficult to paint when we it's not. You have to kind of know how paint works by using it and by working with other artists, learning from each other, etc. 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 I always feel busy when I say etc.
I'm using kind of a big brush right now because I'm focusing on those big shapes. Taking the white and plotting in a mouth and some larger highlights. where I see it off the top of my head. You don't have to ever analyze or rationalize your decision making. Go with your gut if you see it. Do your best to replicate what you're seeing in your own words, if you will. It was a little chilly when I first stepped in, but it's pretty warm. There's recording equipment around, so I obviously don't want to get too crazy in the water because, you know, I don't want to get electrocuted. <laughs> okay, that was morbid. Sorry. since I've done like a poolside painting moment with you. I'm gonna take the black and just go right in with some shadows that I'm seeing. It's gonna give me the depths that I'm looking for in, in the uh, fish. At first I wanted to paint a more simple fish, but then I realized I'm not, I'm gonna paint a beta because they are so beautiful and just kind of feathery and whimsical. Even though, again, I feel like the one that I had when I was little just wasn't happy, but a lot of times that's just because <laughs> I'm gonna do my best to shade everything. with blue, mixing it with black, even a little bit of red. Okay. I might have to flip it upside down at some point. Taking the purple, shading, shading, shading. Purple is just blue and red. And you can add other colors in it to make it more dynamic as well. But that's like the basis of what purple is. But yeah, I feel like painting outside is nice. It's just nice. It just it's, it's so relaxing. Are you getting relaxed? I'm gonna 
add some of these warmer tones here at the end of the tail because with the orangey, oranges and yellows, it'll activate the purples because it's on the opposite side of the color wheel. So the complementary color of the blue is orange and the complementary color of yellow is purple. So they cancel each other out, but they also activate each other. So it's really, really interesting. Adding yellow to highlight next to the orange. That's super important. Wouldn't it be interesting if there were like beta fishes like swimming in here? This is actually salt water. So I don't think beta is salt water fish, but it would be interesting to swim with like really pretty fishies. But like scuba diving kind of scares me. I'm not gonna lie. Like maybe I'll do it one of these days. Maybe I'll get like the balls to do it, but no, really that's scary. me. <laughs> I like the wispiness of what's happening. It's, it's a really bold color and that's so nice. Obviously, I love color. I want it to match my painting. I actually got the nice uh, bathing suit while I was in Vegas at that target uh, and I say that target because it's like near the strip and I got there I didn't think I was actually gonna swim because like Vegas pools I've, I've heard like gross things about it but like I mentally got over it and just like swam anyways because I had some friends who were socializing at the pool so I was like you know what I'm gonna do it blending some of this together and when you have a reference image you gotta like be okay if it's not exactly like the reference like that's actually good because you are inserting your own take on the subject and so it's it's don't worry if it's not exactly like it or if it doesn't look at it, like it at all you're literally just using that as a bouncing off point and honestly it's better if it doesn't look exactly like it because like you can actually improve on anything with your personality your personality can go a long way i think in a world where everything is so fake and automated okay so this light blue is everything to me i'm adding the light blue white and blue together anyway you know you have to realize like what are you offering to the creative community in any way and it's it's got to be something connected to who you are as an individual that no one else can offer and this is just my personal opinion take it or leave it you know i'm just talking, making conversation, that's okay. Ooh. Highlight in here just a little bit. And I'm definitely going to have to highlight and add more red and whatnot. flipping the painting it's so helpful and I'm also gonna flip the reference this helps you see it totally different and oftentimes you can make those mental connections that you need to make to turn it into a masterpiece I'm taking red and deepening some of my shadows with that dark red The red's a little too red, so I'm gonna add it with the blue and it's gonna be more of like a cool purple. I 
Okay. The next thing I'm going to do. <laughs> I have all of these paintbrushes. I'm actually going to take this like bigger paintbrush before I go into the details. And I'm going to paint around it with some white paint. And I'm going to start kind of carving out a few negative space places. And honestly, let's mix the white in with a little bit of black. I think having gray is nice. Not too gray, not too dark. We don't want it to be too active because we want the focus to be the actual fish, not the space around the fish. Now, if you want the space around the fish to be more important than the fish itself, that's your prerogative, but that's not what I am personally going for. Obviously, that looks really, really dark. I might need to get up and get more white. Go get more white. One second. Okay. <laughs> the sun is shining through. It's so beautiful. It's golden hour. It's like 5 p.m. I did some trimming earlier, trimming the plants, which was nice. And now I'm just kicking back, might get back to it later. Okay, I'm making the background look so good right now. And it's inspiring me to and more confidently into my fishy. That looks so good. Ah, uh, yes. Um, sometimes these little paintings can turn into magical masterpieces. It's weird, like on occasion, and sometimes more often than not, the art pieces that you care less about, like the more spontaneous ones, those ones can become some of your best paintings. And so be open to that. You never know when something really good is just going to kind of like accidentally happen. <laughs> you have to make enough bad art to make good art. <laughs> Keep that in mind. Continue adding the white. And in the AI reference, there's actually little flicks of color, which I don't mind. So I'm going to kind of do that. I don't hate it. I will say I kind of like moved it a little too much to one side, but it's all good. Um, being off centered might make it look more in motion, anyways rather than being perfectly centered. Perfectly centered art gets old. Like, it's nice. Um, there's something to be said with off-centered artwork. I really am so glad I chose to do this uh, beta fish because I knew it would be so pretty and it already is. Adding some of that fluorescent yellow, which you can see it just is like how it's in your face. I'm seeing that there's a little bit of orange. 
and through here. I'm telling you, flipping it upside down, it will save your life. You have to trust yourself. Trust the process. <sighs> Just do it. And if you do it with your heart, you do it in other areas of life. And that's so nice. Who wants to be someone who's constantly, like, worried about stuff? Nobody. I mean, I find myself being that person, too, but ASMR has helped, and helping other people helps. So, you know, volunteer. Put out videos that make you feel good and that help other people. Like, that's been a huge part of my healing process over the years. Because, you know, I am doing really well now. You know... It comes in waves, though. Like, sometimes life is great. Sometimes it's not. Um, lately, life has been really, really good. So I want to spread that po positive energy. And doing so makes me happier. But sometimes you have to be the visionary for that positive energy. Like, pave the way for yourself and then others. I hope that makes sense. It's kind of, you know, it's nuanced. Adding some depth. I'm going to have another drink. My, my nails are ratchet right now, so... I added in the blue and now I'm pushing it back into the distance. With white, like adding color and then pushing it back. It's a nice technique and it gives a lot of depth, texture, all those things. It gives it. <laughs> Focusing on the background of your painting is really will set your painting apart. A lot of people don't think the background is as important as the foreground, but it is. It's, it is the space in which the foreground exists. It's super, super important. It shouldn't be neglected. Okay, I'm just going to go ahead and add some of these highlights in the body that I'm noticing. Um, and I'll fix them later, but right now I just got to get it in. Two little, like, dots in here. Those are, like, the tiny scales. Okay. a good start and then when you flip it you're like whoa you see it differently again okay let me flip flip and reflect oh yeah Ooh. I'm liking it it's pretty Okay, now I'm going to turn my, I'm going to screenshot my AI reference image, okay? And then the second image, I'm going to turn it to black and white. And that's going to help me see the lights and the darks really clearly. See? It's a little hack. <sighs> okay. I'm also going to use, oops, I'm 
Okay. I'm gonna use a smaller brush. Maybe even smaller than this. This is a good start. Here's another one that's even smaller. This one is gonna cover some of those big spaces and flipping it to black and white and focusing on it as a black and white image is gonna allow you to use your own color choices and to not rely on like copying the colors exactly, but more so including your own interpretation of the colors. I might have to go get more paint again. I don't know if you've ever done like a negative space exercise, but it's really, really helpful for painting. Down here is definitely darker. And there isn't any real right or wrong per se. It's all just information. And you can use what you like and capture what you what suits your fancy and then kind of Let go of the rest. That's the beauty of painting, is that's where your personal take kind of comes in. looks so good. It's important to try to sit up straight when you're painting. I mean, it is hard, especially whenever you're like looking down, which I am for this one. Um, you know, good posture is important, but it's all good. Try to, I do my best and I get up and I stretch, you know, painting is very like kind of methodical and you know, you can get more done if you're just like sitting still for a long time and sometimes your arm will start hurting. So just like take a minute, stretch, walk around. Okay, I'm gonna make the eye a bit more defined, more eyeball-y. Here we go. Let's kind of add a moment on the lips. Every time I get in water, I think about the pros and the cons of water births. If you know, you know. I guess birthing a child into water is really good for the baby and it can be really good for the mom too, but it just depends, I guess, on the mom and what she wants. I don't know. It's just like one of those instinctual things for me. I get in the water and I'm like, hmm, this is an option. Gravity isn't the same in water, which is nice. Okay, doing my best to explain what I'm doing. 
adding some light blue scales by just dotting my brush. I'm gonna make in here light blue too instead of white because that's what it honestly I think wants to be. It's super ethereal looking, which I really love. I think it's nice, unique. Taking blue and purple, and in here, oh, my phone's gonna die soon, so this is probably, I'm just gonna add some dark spots. A lot of times we hold ourselves back by not wanting to add the shading because we're afraid it's going to mess it up but remember you can always paint in the light spots over the dark all right i'm going to use just a little bit of a smaller brush I'm going to look through my brushes. Really, if you do this general to specific approach, you can make it look as rendered as you want, um, depending on how much time you want to spend on it, really. But taking the smaller brush is going to help me get some details. Adding some highlights in here with my smaller brush, just mixing the fluorescent yellow with the white and finding places where I can kind of chunk it off and make it a little bit more solid so that the eye feels like there's parts that are connected. I'm going to also add some of this yellow into the torso of the fish. I don't know if that has a different name for fishies. The fishies are so cute. <sighs> My dad always had a fish tank growing up and, you know, he would clean it out and I would feed the fish and I don't know, they're beautiful. I don't feel really bad for having them. I did feel a little bit bad for about how the beta just didn't swim that much, but I guess that's just part of how they are. I'm really not sure though. It's interesting. So this is the little fin in here. And there's also Here. Definitely think there needs to be more purple to set off the yellow. Like, there's more shading that needs to happen. Okay.
Again, it's important to not be afraid to go as dark as you need to. And then you can always kind of move things around by painting over it with a different color. Like, don't be afraid to do that. And don't be afraid to use your own colors. Like, as long as it's the right value, which means the lightness or the darkness, the same, like, it doesn't matter what exact color you use. I hope that makes sense. So try to get the value correct, which is why I have my reference in black and white, because I'm trying to get the value where I want it to be. And then whatever color I choose to use will look good. add some more darks in here kind of build up the paint a little bit I definitely feel like that there's some reds that I'm not accounting for like in here okay I'm gonna flip it upside down you can see how it can be super involved and sometimes it's just takes a long time. I'm using a bigger brush now and I'm actually gonna go around the fishy. I'm also gonna mess it up a little. This just makes it look better. I don't know why. Like if you go in and just kind of do some unexpected brush strokes. Sometimes something can happen beyond like what you could have like done if you were really, really trying. It's weird. Weird but true. Mm. You don't want to do it too much though because you can kind of ruin it <laughs> but if you're taking risks in your painting that will show and usually come off as a positive because it's better than something super safe and predictable all right let me take a look at this right side up I like the fact that it looks like it's moving that's cool it looks a little sparkly, which I love. Come on. Ooh, I love it. This is not quite right. That's why taking a picture is really nice because you can change. You, you'll see things that you wouldn't have seen if you were just looking at it, like taking a picture automatically something's different and you're like oh I see that okay this looks good I love it you know, I'm gonna take one more picture maybe the mouth can just be slightly improved upon I'm just gonna also the eye is probably just a bit bigger than that adding a few little things here and there like it's just a few places that feel like they need to be connected I suppose
That's pretty though. Wow. See, the more time you spend on it, the more you see, the more you see, the more you want to fix. The longer it goes. The more you see. I don't know. It's just... And right now I'm holding my reference because sometimes it's just easier that way because you can see it up close and... So pretty. All right. Make sure. I could probably put just a few more like interesting negative spaces in the beta tail. The reds, the pinks, the yellows, all of the warm colors look really nice next to each other. There's some colors that are brighter than others, which is nice. Okay, I'm just gonna add a shadow on the mouth. Uh, think if I want to flip it upside down at this point to see it differently or if I just want to kind of keep working with what is happening in the painting. Probably that because no one's going to be comparing it to the reference so you have to keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. Like they're just going to be looking at the painting. So you want it to look good when they're looking at it. Regardless of what the reference looks like, you want it to feel like it's cohesive. Uh, let's get like a nice dark blue right in here. Also make that really dark. some of that. A lot of these paints that I'm using are fluorescent, so this is going to look amazing under the black light. Again, some of my best paintings were pretty quick. And I like the fact that this one kind of happened a bit spontaneously. So, all right, I'm gonna take one more picture. Taking a picture again, it helps. I love the fact that it looks like it has movement. Oh, so pretty. I'm just gonna take a tiny bit of this. Well, too much. Yeah, I don't wanna mess up a good thing because it looks good. I don't want that to pull the eye away from there. Hang on. All of my water is all raw. Here, this is what I'm gonna do. That looks good. Just pushing it back, there's some color back there. Nice. And later I'll paint the sides of the painting, but I don't wanna get like paint all over the pool, so yeah. <laughs> get paint all over this pool. So, <laughs> all right, this is it. I hope you liked it. It's pretty, right? It's beautiful. I love it. I can't wait to put it on my wall. 
and um, yeah, maybe someday it will have another home other than my wall. <laughs> um, I guess it's for sale. Let's we'll see. Why not? Thanks for being here. This is so fun. This was seriously amazing. I have to do this more. And I will definitely invite you. Bye.